So this is Server Manager actually running on a Windows 8 client. And this is the overall dashboard you see when you first enter the tool. Um, it will automatically create groups, things like Hyper-V servers, remote desktop servers, and you can create your own groups. But it's showing me an overall health. So I can see my all servers, there's a problem on one of them with services. So I can always just click that. And it's showing me this certain services stopped. So I'll be able to right click, start it. So on multiple servers with the problem, I could select all of them and resolve them all in one go. I can go down and see more detail. I can add additional servers. So I could just do a find now and find all the servers. And what I'm actually gonna do is, I order it by name. I have a Windows 2008 R2 server. So I'm gonna add that as well. So even though this is part of Windows Server 8, I can actually connect to 2008 and 2008 R2 servers, providing they have that Windows Management Framework 3.0 installed, which allows that remote management from server manager. So notice there it said performance counters aren't started. I could just right click and fix it right from there. We can actually change the view so I could basically zoom out a little bit so I can get more detail in the screen. As I select servers, I can see events related to that server. I can select multiple servers to see the sum all the service status, CPU performance memory on those boxes. There's best practice analyzers, what roles and features are installed on all the various servers. Likewise, I select a server and then I can go and look at the storage from that server. So for example, the SCS01, has got one storage pool with a mirrored storage space created on it using these, that storage pool uses these two physical disks and it has an available disk that's not part of any storage pool. I can look at the volumes, any shares, any iSCSI virtual disks, which I have one on the BFS08. Going back, look at general file service information, Hyper-V and obviously manage RDS. I can add and remove roles and features remotely on servers. I just fire up the add roles. It launched that page. <laughs> Scenario based is for RDS only in Windows Server 8. Expecting that to change in the future. Role based or feature based, select the server. Or I can actually inject roles and features into a virtual hard disk. So it's not even running, it's not connected to a VM right now, but I can just select the VHD and inject roles into it. So I select the box, select the server I wanna add. It's gonna do some basic configuration depending on which role I enable. So that's really the, the basic remote management. Now there is one difference when you run it locally. So this is server manager actually running on one of my Hyper-V boxes and it has a lot more servers added to it, which is one dashboard, there's more groups available. You can see here, I've got some manageability issues I can just select here. They're showing me how there's a problem. There's a lot of services that maybe have issues that are stopped. So again, I could go through select multiple ones and fix them all. So even though they're on different boxes, I can fix all of them in one go. But I have this additional local server. So this allows me to do some basic configuration, such as con configuring NIC network adapter teamings, managing the firewall, setting IP address information. There we go. So I'm actually using NIC teaming on this box. So if I select that, it brings up the NIC teaming dialog. You can see I've got one NIC teamed for these two adapters. So it's just part of Windows Server 8. 
I can do modify things like time zone product ID, Windows update settings. So this is just an extra bit available for local server that isn't available for remote boxes. But apart from that, everything else, all these events, services, as I showed already, this is available remotely. So that's really a really quick tour of server manager. But the key part is that I'm managing groups of servers now and I'm managing them remotely. And so even if that remote server is server core, I manage exactly the same way. There's no loss in functionality.